Hey Facebook, it has been a really long time since I've done a video. I went and had a baby and have definitely been missing um, being a part of the political dialogue. And I think that this video might be one of the most important videos that I've ever done. Uh, certainly more important than me adding clarity uh, to the George Floyd situation, which garnered 100 million views. Uh, but what we are seeing and what I experienced here in DC and the aftermath and the discussions that are being, are being had about the insurrection, the Capitol riots. This is terrifying stuff. I have never seen such a mass brainwashing take place with so little facts. And I wanted to, again, provide clarity. And I have some notes here uh, just for specifics because I think, uh, especially in a time when we know that there is censorship in America and that we know that Facebook will pull down this video because the truth is not allowed to be told, it is important um, that I remain extremely factual so that nothing can be disputed. Um, so first and foremost, I want to just tell everybody that I was in DC um, uh, when this Capitol riot took place and I keep putting it uh, in uh, parentheses because it is very bizarre to me that this is being claimed to be a riot when the Black Lives Matter riots that took place all summer were just deemed to be peaceful protests. So that's the first thing. I was 40 weeks pregnant. I was sitting on my couch and my phone went off psychotically um, from my fam family members who were concerned saying, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? They know that I live very close to the White House um, in DC and they were apparently watching CNN and watching the news and they thought that DC was burning. My husband and I almost laughed and kept saying, why are you asking us now if we're okay, we're totally fine. There were actually nights over the summer that were scary when Black Lives Matter was rioting because they were marching through the streets. Uh, they were breaking, you know, breaking cars, standing on cars, stomping on cars, breaking in uh, to restaurants, looting, robbing, and they were going after people that had nothing to do with anything, just going after regular citizens and people that live here in DC. They were going after federal property. They notoriously built down and burned an entire church church to the ground in DC. They were trying to pull down statues, you will recall. Uh, Black Lives Matter accomplished billions of dollars in damage all across America during the summers. And it was the word riots were never used. They were simply called uh, Black Lives Matter, mostly peaceful protests. So I was a bit alarmed um, just because I knew it was quiet outside. I didn't he hear helicopters hovering low, which we heard as they were trying to disperse the Black Lives Matter crowds. Um, DC gets a lot of action. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh protests. They stormed uh, the Capitol building. They were going into offices of senators, yelling at them in the hallways. None of these things were called riots. So I was first and foremost just confused. Um, and then obviously afterwards, it seems that suddenly the rhetoric had gotten to a place that was insane. Uh, AOC has started saying that she survived murder, that Ted Cruz almost murdered her, uh, which means that she was an almost murder victim. Uh, we later learned that she wasn't even in the Capitol building that was broken into and that she was actually evacuated from her office, um, a different, an entirely different building. And it was actually as a precaution and before anybody ever entered uh, the Capitol building. So almost murdered is pretty intense. I also saw the hashtag trending um, on Twitter of never forget January 6th. Using the term never forget uh, is intentional. It derives uh, emotion for a lot of people. It's what we say when we talk about 9-11, never forget 9-11. Thousands of Americans were killed on 9-11. Uh, it, it was a horrible terrorist act uh, and something that we should definitely never forget. Uh, never forget also uh, for a lot of people derives uh, memories uh, of the Holocaust, obviously, something that we should never forget. Millions of people were executed um, in, in camps uh, during World War II. And uh, it's something that we have entire museums uh, dedicated to to talk about the, the horrific tragedies and the things that happened. So why would the hashtag never forget be used um, to describe people entering a federal building illegally, um, uh, which was done? Nobody is denying that people illegally entered. We saw uh, uh, the glass was smashed. We saw some clips where they were let in, it seemed, and they were walking in, but definitely other clips in which they were not. So that aspect is not being denied, but why try to derive um, such such a, a serious imagery to people's heads? Tucker Carlson brought uh, to attention the fact that CNN in a really extreme manner compared what happened on January 6th to the Rwandan genocide. 
Uh, just to put that into perspective, uh, one million plus Tutsis were killed uh, during the Rwandan uh, genocide and uh, they were killed in horrific means, burned alive, entire entire cities, uh, people slaughtered in the streets with machetes. One million plus people uh, were killed. And they are now saying that what happened on January 6th was akin to the Rwandan genocide. Um, that should offend you just from a, a stance of if you have a brain cell. Um, what those people lived through in Rwanda uh, was incredibly real. 70% of the Tutsi uh, population in Rwanda was taken out. And they're saying that January 6th was like this. Um, if you ask the average person who does not think critically and just accepts what the media tells them to and who is buying into this rhetoric that something big happened on January 6th, they will say people were killed. And that is accurate. People were killed. People, people, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, people died um, uh, during uh, the, during January 6th, people died. That is 100% accurate. What they cannot tell you beyond that is how did they die? Uh, the most important thing to know is that everybody that died was a Trump supporter. So you are being told this was an armed insurrection and that they were trying to kill people. And yet the only people that died were Trump supporters. Also important is how did these people die? Um, one died of a stroke. Uh, one died of a heart attack. We actually know, obviously, Ashley Bobbitt, I think, was probably the most famed name. That was the Trump supporter who was shot as she was trying to enter through broken glass. You may have seen uh, that clip. She was shot by a police officer. Um, uh, so the idea that these people came to the Capitol armed is completely dishonest because you are a DC is not uh, a, you can't just carry weaponry in DC. Uh, we are not a conceal uh, and carry uh, district. Uh, dis you know, district of Columbia is just, you just can't have weapons on you. Even people, um, you know, former police officers that come in here, they're, they're just not allowed to carry weapons in DC. So this idea of these people were armed, the first question you should be asking is with what? Um, Tucker Carlson also did an analysis of tracing where the idea of an armed insurrection came from. Uh, and it was from, you may have heard a police officer died. Uh, he was one of the five people that died that day. You should be asking yourself how that police officer died. Initially, the New York Times reported um, that he was beat to death with a fire extinguisher. Uh, what people don't know is that was fully debunked. That entire storyline is a lie. There was no police officer that was beat to death um, by armed insur or by unarmed insurrectionists uh, with a fire extinguisher. There was no evidence to support that claim. In fact, uh, after the riot, um, he went to his office and texted his brother and said that he was pepper sprayed twice and 24 hours after um, he died. So that's another story that leads to a dead end. Uh, it's completely untrue. Uh, there was no police officer that was beaten by any Trump supporters or any people that were at the Capitol that day uh, with a fire extinguisher. So, and allegedly, by the way, that police officer who did die, uh, that the fifth, being the fifth person died um, from a stroke. Uh, now that can't be confirmed. That was told uh, by the police chief or uh, one of the people at the police station had said that he died of a stroke, but he was subsequently cremated and no autopsy was performed. So all of this to say that every single person that died was a Trump supporter. And yet right now you have Democrats going around saying that they were almost murdered. The people were not armed unless you're assuming that having a Trump flag um, and wearing a MAGA hat is a form of ha you know being armed. There's no people that have been accused of having weapons. But here's the most significant part where you could say, okay, if you're going to use the word a terrorist, then I think it's fair to say that it was an act of terrorism that we know that pipe bombs were inserted and the media ran with this. There were bombs that were planted at the RNC and the DNC headquarters. The first thing that a critical thinker would say um, in knowing that is why the RNC and the DNC headquarters? If they're a Trump supporter, why would they put pipe bombs under the RNC headquarters? And if they were a Democrat su supporter, why would they put uh, pipe bombs at the DNC? So that was already weird. Uh, what's weird about that also is that it turns out with time, of course, when the truth actually comes out, that those pipe bombs were planted the night before. Uh, so that did not happen. That was not a part of the Capitol riots. It had nothing to do with people going into the building and entering it um, illegally, which I've already said I disagree with. I don't think and under any circumstances um, that you know people should be breaking glass and going into buildings uh, to take selfies and to take the Speaker of the House, uh, you know, whatever it is they took from her and were taking, you know, pictures and making a mockery. Uh, I, you know, I don't support that at all. Uh, but it is important to stick to the facts, which is that these pipe bombs uh, 
were inserted or placed the night before and the FBI still, which I find to be incredulous, has not determined who placed uh, the pipe bombs. So that could be a Democrat that placed them, that could be a Republican that placed them. I find it unbelievable that a couple of blocks from the White House where the president lives, they have still not determined who placed those pipe bombs. In fact, I think, you know, and I'm speculating here, it's an opinion that they do know um, uh, who placed those pipe bombs and they are withholding information from the public and allowing the media to run away with it and allowing people to believe that it was Trump supporters and it just factually speaking was not. That is an unknown. Uh, very little is known about what actually happened this day. Um, but we are being told that it was a Rwandan genocide uh, where millions of, of people died. Um, this is really scary stuff. And what's scary is that so many people fell into this delusion. People were reporting uh, people that they live with, their neighbors, their brothers, their sisters, uh, people that they went to school with and saying they were in the Capitol that day, report them, something should happen to them, these people should be arrested. Um, and so you're sort of allowing this, this, this poisonous thing to happen where you're having people turn on each other absent any facts. Um, you know, if you are going to say that these insurrectionists for breaking glass, they're deemed insurrectionists, they're deemed traitors, they're deemed treasonous, and at the same time say that when we went through this for six weeks long during the summer uh, because of George Floyd riots and protests and the breaking of glass and the looting and the rioting that took place, we just deserved it because we're just a horrible country and everyone's so racist that when one, when one black man dies of what has just now been confirmed as a drug overdose in Minnesota uh, and a police officer goes to the extreme to stand on his neck, that means that we are all guilty and we all must suffer the consequences and you know, federal property is allowed to be pulled down, churches are allowed to be burned, and none of that is considered rioting or insurrectionist. Um, but some idiots break glass and go into a Capitol building, no politician gets hurt, uh, no building is burned down, and this is, this is the big deal. Uh, an important historical uh, lesson here, and I think what everyone should take the time to look up, uh, is the Reichstag fire, uh, the notorious Reichstag fire that took place in Germany, in Berlin. Um, and it was at a time when the Nazis were against uh, the communists and trying to seize power in America. And, uh, you know, it has been still uh, quite nebulous on the details of who actually started the fire in Parliament. Um, but the Nazis seized the opportunity. One communist allegedly uh, started a fire in, par uh, in Parliament and the Nazis used um, that as a pretext to garner sympathy and to pretend that this act was so horrible that they now had a right to strip people of civil liberties. And it is how the Nazis assumed a totality of power um, in uh, Germany, in, in Germany, in Nazi Germany. They uh, forced uh, the the Reichstag, um, it was called the Reichstag Fire Act to be signed. I think it was called an act, uh, no, uh, the Reichstag Fire Decree to be signed um, and allowed them to mass arrest all of their uh, anybody who was politically dissident, uh, anybody who didn't agree with who didn't agree with them, it allowed them uh, to seize basically ultimate power uh, and, and to stop these people in their tracks. And they seized so many civil liberties. They shut down publications. Uh, they shut down speech. They started censorship. Um, and that is this is exactly almost textbook what the Democrats are doing right now. Except there was no fire. <laughs> there was no fire that happened. Uh, and yet they are accusing essentially. 80 million Americans of being political terrorists. They are shutting down shows. They are saying uh, they, they wiped the parlay app, you know, entirely. Uh, they are now saying, you know, in collaboration with the tech companies that nobody is allowed to question the results of this election because it led to this horrific event where only Trump supporters died. That makes no sense, right? Um, and so they are censoring accounts, thousands and thousands of accounts that they're saying are guilty on Twitter uh, for this insurrection. They've censored a sitting president and one of the most notable things is that they keep showing this clip of Trump saying, march to the Capitol, march to the Capitol. And they stop the clip short because they don't want you to hear the end of the sentence where he says peacefully and patriotically. So they're outright lying about what the president said uh, so that they can censor him and 80 million uh, voting Americans who supported the president in this election. They've canceled accounts. They've shut down publications from being able to have a, vo a voice. Parlay, which was the social media app that conservatives were conversing on uh, because Twitter had started this mass censorship. Uh, Apple and Google kicked them out of the store and used some absurd thing like, well, you know, you're guilty of the insurrection, even though Trump wasn't even on Parlay. So Trump is 
guilty, but Parlay is guilty, but 80 million Americans are guilty. And what they're really doing is they're seizing civil liberties. They're taking away our right to free speech. It's why when I make these videos, I tell you, hit the share button, hit the share button, um, because we know that this video could be wiped tomorrow because there is mass censorship going on in America. The truth is not allowed to be told. We saw this all during the election cycle when they basically said, if it goes against the narrative that we've agreed upon, uh, we will take it and um, we will we will do away with it. And it's a scary time to be in this country when there are so many people, even though I believe more people know the truth, there are more people that don't. I do these videos because people around the world need to understand what's happening in America. Um, we, we essentially, we, we have the tech in collaboration with the mainstream media uh, and, and they are shutting down speech, censoring, lying, smearing, and libeling uh, regular Americans. Regular Americans, we had Bank of America begin going through the charges. Talk about seizing civil liberties of its clients to see if they were around the Capitol um, on January 6th to do what with that information, nobody knows, right? Um, it, we are having conversations now where they're saying that any, any books that are written by conservatives uh, need to be wiped. Josh Hawley uh, accusing Ted Cruz of murder uh, for calling uh, attention to serious anomalies um, that happened during the election time in terms of having the rules changed. He, used, he had a very practical, sober analysis um, of what was happening under Pennsylvania law that any person should be able to have a dialogue of. They're now saying you're not allowed to even say that. Um, here's my question, and I'll wrap it up with this. If you are the Democrats and you are saying that you legitimately won this election and Joe Biden is, by your metrics, the most popular American president that's ever run, he got more votes than Barack Obama. He was that energetic and passionate and he moved the nation in such a way uh, that you now, he have the most popular president ever uh, sitting in the White House. Why, why do you have to censor and silence 80 million Americans? Why, why would you have to do that if you were that popular? Right. If, if you're if, if this is real, um, what are you so afraid of by giving a platform to the small political dissidents? Right. I mean, you would just say, oh, this person is someone that is political and disagrees with me, but it doesn't matter because I'm so popular. Why are they going through such extremes to shut down uh, conservative voices, conservative books, um, uh, all of their political contenders? Why are they going through these extremes to rush through these policies? There was even talks um, of the Democrats in the House were going to try to pass an act to make MAGA rallies, um, an act of terrorism. The gathering of people that support Trump was going to be considered uh, a, a terrorism. Why are you going through such extremes? Uh, but to compare them to a genocide, uh, what are the Democrats actually trying to accomplish in this country? And let me say this to you people uh, that follow me and hate me and don't like me. Uh, you need to sober yourselves up really quick to what is going on uh, because you may not like me, you may not love like Trump, you may not like Trump supporters, uh, but the powers that they are taking, are taking right now, the leaps and bounds they are going through, um, that'll include you too. Uh, one day. That will include you too, right? It, it, this is not, they're just going to come inward and inward and inward. Uh, and eventually, if when they say that you can't even critique us on Facebook and you agreed with that and thought it was great because they were going after Trump supporters, eventually you're going to have something to critique um, and you're not going to be allowed to do that. Uh, so, so don't go with this, I hate Trump so much and I hate conservatives so much uh, that you would suspend your own civil liberties. This is a, a scary time and a dangerous time uh, uh, to be in America right now as a conservative, um, but it also is a scary time to be in America as a liberal. I don't care how leftist you are, you better recognize how scary it is when the tech companies have the power to censor a sitting president of the United States and you're not allowed to talk about it. I encourage everybody to share this video. Uh, I missed you guys. I missed having these chats. Uh, share, 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 share. And of course, comment because I would love to uh, hear any feedback. Prove me wrong.